Hey guys and girls, in today's video we're going to be talking about friction welding and friction welding involves um, joining together two plastic parts using PLA and a Dremel. So the idea is you get some really nice clean joins um, and when you paint it you can't see the, the joins which is super super nice. So as you can see on this, this is the Boba Fett armor and that's been friction welded together and it works really, really well. So what you're gonna need is a Dremel and the the Dremels come with standard collets, um, which actually don't fit PLA. Um, so you're gonna have to buy a different collet. You can, you can sort of bodge it to work and I'll show you that a little bit later on in the video. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the collet to um, a different one that I've bought. Okay, a different size, which actually fits the 1.75 millimeter filament. Um, they just pop in and out really easy. I picked up um, a pack from B and Q, which had a 1.75 millimeter collet in it. So let's switch it out. And what we're going to do is the idea is we put some uh, filament into the Dremel. So we're going to take some um, some just standard 1.75 mil filament, snip it down and just feed it in and I'm going to explain to you how long you need it because uh, you can't have it too long because it won't work it will spin out and and we just won't pro probably most likely snap um, and that's something that you, you don't want to really have happen so we're sliding the PLA in making sure it's all uh, tightly fastened. you should have a little uh, spanner with your Dremel you might not have an official Dremel you don't need an official Dremel they um, any sort of uh, rotary tool will work with this. Uh, just remember to be careful with your hands. These do spin at high speed. Um, and if I show you this now, see that's too long because it's it's sort of like coning out. Okay, you don't want it to cone out. You want to be super straight when it, sp when it spins. So you're going to need to cut that down probably about just under an inch maybe. See, even that's probably going to be a little bit too long. I mean that's that's better. There's there's a lot less um, arcing. But just take it down just before it starts spinning. Okay, and then that should be fine. There you go. So it's hardly hardly sort of coning out. That's sort of what you want it to do. So then you're going to take your two printed parts. Now you probably should clamp them together or tape them uh, along the edge that you're not going to be welding, uh, so as they don't move. Um, I happen to have misplaced my clamps. I've looked everywhere for them, so I'm going to have to probably order some more online because they've walked off. I um, guess the pixies have been in the house. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to do this. try and do this by hand today. If I drop it, I do apologise. Um, but basically, what you're going to do is turn on your Dremel, maybe start off slow just to see, to see how it goes. Okay, and you're just literally going to pull the Dremel back towards you. You don't want to be pushing it. Okay, if you push it, it just doesn't work very well. So you want to pull it back away from you when you're welding. Okay, and you'll get a much, much cleaner, nicer joint. And the idea is just to use a little bit of pressure to push the PLA into the join. And obviously what that's doing is it's it's touching, the, the two plastics are touching together. It's generating um, heat and melting the PLA and it's pushing that, that melted PLA into the gap and then hardening and almost like almost like super glue um see there we go i dropped it i told you i would um almost like super glue joining them together but it is super super strong um this process does work but it is a little bit time consuming and it's time consuming because you can burn through the the pla in the dremel quite quickly meaning you have to change it out so it's quite good for like small pieces like this but even on this piece i'd probably have to change out that little bit of plastic in the end of the dremel maybe six six or seven times which is time consuming so you can see here that i'm just going to literally spin it up and pull it towards me and you can see it's shrinking there it's pushing all the pla as it's touching and melting it and pushing it in I have removed the sound of the Dremel because that is so annoying to hear. Um, you don't want to be hearing that. So you can see that, hopefully you can see, that it just melts into the join line. There we go. Okay. And just take your time, take your time with this. You want to get a really nice weld all the way along. Okay, and you can just 
keep going you want it all the way along there so that it sort of joins together and you can do this on both sides so I, I've actually found that I, I am going to do this on both sides of the material and you might be thinking well that's going to leave quite a messy edge but actually you can sand it down really easily um, so you can I use the the Stanley just polyfiller as well um, just in case I miss any gaps um, you don't really need to do it but it will give you a much nicer finish overall just to make sure that it's all even you can see here I'm having to switch out the the filament in the Dremel again and this one actually so if you got the original collet what you can do is you can actually take a bit of the PLA put it into put it into the collet the original sized collet that came with your Dremel okay cut it right down to you cut it right down to the the very base of the the collet Okay, and then you can squeeze in um, a proper piece next to it. So it's just like bulking out the, the inside of the little collet. And that means that you're not uh, having to buy that extra, extra collet really. So this is the original one here. And see, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, pop it into the Dremel, take some uh, PLA, slide it on in there. Okay, and then it creates like a spacer so if we cut that off you can see there's a nice little spacer there now and I can slide in a piece next to it okay and that works just as well um, but like I say you can buy the 1.75 millimeter sized collet to, to, to save that hassle of having to, to jam a piece in there okay so like I said this is the time consuming bit where you have to keep changing out your PLA in the Dremel getting the right size and then carrying on with your weld. It'd be really nice um, if someone would make like a little filament gun almost that does the same job that had a feeder on it. I might, might try and look into that. Um, something that would feed the PLA through it at the same time. So you can see here I was trying to do a little bit of a close-up of how it's how it's welding and as we spin it up get it to speed here you can see I'm just applying pressure and there you go you can see that 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 friction that causes it to melt and just pushes into that that join um, and that's the magic of friction welding okay so I'll do a little bit more just to show you and then we'll have a look at some of the finished results I haven't got a painted one unfortunately I've just just shipped off the the painted one I've done um, to a client but this is a this is a great little trick I'd be interested to know what's what sort of glues you use I, I tend to just use the cheap um, cheap super glue from pound shop that seems to work okay but I know a lot of people use gorilla glues and all sorts of stuff to join their parts so do comment below and let me know what what you found to work best um, be really really interested to know that so just uh, just finishing off this piece here um, don't forget to check out the Instagram so obviously the Instagram's up so at AHC me UK please uh, hit that follow button over there because um, it, it will help me out and you'll get to see some of the, the cool prints that are coming up I'm gonna be doing some stuff with uh, Nico Industries um, talking about his patron and doing some of his uh, some of his prints. So you can see here that we've got the join done. I've had to I have done both sides, and you can see there's a really quite nasty um, nasty weld line on the front of the armor, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch out to um, a sanding tool just to take down the the brunt of the plastic. And these are quite good because they do get again they heat the plastic because of the the speed they go at and then that helps to melt it and and just clean it up and give it a nice smooth uh, finish you can just use sandpaper um, and I'll show you I'll show you that in a minute I'll pop some poly filler on um, and just show you how I'd clean this up and try and get a really perfect well as best a perfect finish as possible so with that I'm just very lightly going over um, melting away that weld line 
and again just take your time you don't what you don't want to do is go uh, too fast and actually burn into the into the plastic and deform the print because then you'll have a hole to fill or you'll have something else you need to clean up um, and we want to just get these out as quickly as possible but at a high quality maybe you're selling them on Etsy um, maybe you're just uh, doing it for a friend or for your cosplay whatever you're doing it for you want a good finish so just taking some time here just to get it right okay and just check as you go make sure that you're getting that smooth smooth sort of texture that you're getting 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 it how you want it So that's the majority of the the world line removed and i'm just gonna so i've noticed a couple of little imperfections there's still a little bit of a gap very tiny bit where i've missed so that's where i'll apply the coat of polyfiller um and then take it and then sand it back with some sandpaper So what's your process with uh, sandpaper? You know, what do you start with? What grit do you use? How many um, passes do you do on it? So that, that would be extremely interesting to find out. So just going, uh, just roughing up the front making sure all that debris and that weld lines just not there anymore. I tend to use 100 grit sandpaper purely because it it just does a nice job. I find when I start off with like much coarser sandpaper, I tend to sometimes go a bit too hard on it and it just damages the print. So like I say, do comment below with your process. You know, it's great to learn from you guys and girls. And again, constant quality control, always checking, always making sure that you're getting the results you want. For the layer lines, um, I just literally run over this with sandpaper. I don't, don't do anything special. I know quite a few people are using resin at the moment, painting a very clear coat of resin to reduce the layer lines. Um, I found it works, but I still prefer good old sandpaper. Okay, now if you can feel this and you can't feel the join with your finger, then you're you're going to be onto a winner. Okay, if you can still that feel that join, that's when you bring in bring in your fillers and just touch that up with some filler and then sand it back down. I've used quite a few different fillers. Um, any sort of bog standard cheap poly filler or wood filler works really well. I did try the car body filler and it's toxic as it's so toxic it's horrible um it can you know damage your organs it's got warnings all over it and it wasn't any better um it just tended to dry quite quickly and wasn't very nice at all so here we go i'm just using um a very used spatula i really should clean my spatulas in between use uh, just to apply a little bit of polyfill you can see my polyfill is not doing too well at the moment but it'll work okay so I'm literally gonna slop it on and just gonna paste it into the any any gaps that are left there's not much going on here but it just just gives that little bit extra smoothness and you don't have to do this you could probably get away with just doing the welding but it depends. It depends what result you're after. The good thing is you also don't have to worry about the back. The back's not going to be on show. So don't worry what too much what the underneath looks like. Okay, so just focus on. So that's all I'm doing. I'll just put that on, cover the gap, let it dry. 
Okay, let that dry for a good two, two, two and a half, three hours. Um, and then we can start sanding it. We'll just sand it back, um, take off the polyfiller and we are good to go. So here's one I sort of prepared earlier. So we're just gonna sand this down again. Um, try to wear a mask when you're doing this, okay? So some of the filler dust is it's pretty unpleasant. Even if it's just a, a cheap material mask, you don't need like a, a respirator or anything unless you've got one. And just uh, just make sure you, you don't press too hard. You just wanna get that top layer of filler off. You don't wanna be uh, pushing too hard into the, into the join area because then you're gonna pull some of that filler out. So if we take a look and see what sort of result we got. And you can keep doing this, you can keep going over it. You can, you know, add another layer of filler if you're not happy. Um, but just take your time really and you'll get some hopefully really good results that you're really pleased with. So let's take a look. So as you can see, the joint, you can hardly see the join line. You can see it, but trust me, once you get um, a coat of primer on, especially if you're using filler primer and then your, your top coat, you will not have any issues with that whatsoever. Okay, so let's check out some of the, the finished, finished pieces. So if we check out uh, this one, this is uh, finished, it's printed in two types of PLA, that's the color difference, PLA plus on top and just PLA white on the bottom. I run out of a reel, so I had to use PLA plus. Um, here's the ab section, and again, really nice clean join on that. The back doesn't matter because it's not on show, but once you prime and paint that, you just will not see that join line. And again, that's the one with the dry poly filler on that needs just sanding down just to hide the line. You can see the helmet there in the background. So I'm really happy with this. I hope this has helped you out. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe and share.